In this edition, we bring you a story from Kenya on the growth rate of ICT. The Nigerian IT agency need a science a memorandum of understanding with Convenant University. Hello and welcome to this program. I'm Bayero Agabi. Also to come on the show is the Postmaster General of the Federation, PMG, on staff duty and its importance. Please stay with us, but first, issues and development are made news in the past one week. Ideas, innovations, products and services, people, places and trends. Technology connects them all on AIT Infotech Network. Join Africa's leading ICT broadcaster, Bayero Agabi, for issues, analysis and trends in how technology can make your life better. At this time, on AIT Network, I am Bayero Agabi. As part of his drive towards fulfilling its mandates, the National Information Technology Development Agency, NIDA, has again taken a step further in its strategic partnership agreement with Convenance University, Ottawa Open State. This partnership, which commutated in the signing of a memorandum of agreement between both parties, is aimed at further strengthening the viability of the Nigerian educational sector through the use of IT tools. The occasion was witnessed by stakeholders from IT and education sector, while some products and innovation by an university institution were on show. We really do believe that uh, IT, apart from being, uh, you know, like so it's seen as important as math and English, is also useful in promoting the way you can study uh, being an, a tool and aid to education, you know, like, you know, things like simulation. Uh, so we're encouraging local development of uh, solutions that will improve educational performance. In the views of the Director General of NIDA, the signing of such an MOU with Convenance University was a bold step towards promoting research in IT as NIDA is already making provisions for IT incubation center to help annex youth creative capacities. We have some initiatives like the Information Technology Developers Entrepreneurship Accelerator in uh, Lagos and in Calabar. Such centers and other software development centers and in fact we already just developed a software testing center. These are initiatives intended to provide exit routes for these students as they leave they go straight into an incubation center which will prepare them for ready to the market kind of products according to the chancellor convenant university all human endeavors can be achieved with the right mindset as global breakthroughs are achievable in nigeria there is nothing happening in any part of the world today positive that cannot happen in our country all we need is to have a brand new mindset not just living for self or living for others to live. That is real life. Consuming all of the time without giving anything out, it was dead. Imagine if you stop breathing. Because of fear you are breathing too much carbon dioxide. Why? All the time. I'm not giving out anymore. And you keep your breath. Ten minutes. If ten minutes you're on the floor. Gone. So if anything, it is the contribution we make that keeps us alive. As the demand for mobile data usage continues to increase globally, there is increasingly the need for real-time data synchronization and backup system. In Nigeria, like other developed countries, mobile data consumers will now have the opportunity of securing their information across various platforms and devices. We will have the opportunity to change lives. We will have the opportunity to uh, make sure that uh, Cyber 6 has uh, the brand um, and the understanding that, yes, we are a great technology company, but more importantly, we care about our users um, that uh, live, breathe, and become ambassadors of our product. Today, phones, laptops, iPads, and other mobile gadgets are shaping business processes, government operations, transactions, learning, and lifestyle. While the security of such data exchange remains an issue of concern to many, thus, in the event of loss, damage, or theft, what should a person or organization do to recover such data directly? So, CyberSync was built to have 
all of that data synchronized in one spread place. Easy for the users to get to. Um, you have complete access on a user interface. It's all secure with username, user password, and device identification number. And we're really excited to release this, not only release this solution to the marketplace. Though some people may express reservation about the extent of data security and confidentiality. Now I want to find out where is this data protected? Uh, do, you, do you protect them in, 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 the, in the cloud? Do you protect them here physically? Where actually do you store them? How safe are these data in terms of security? Can you assure of a client or customer's information, confidentiality and trust? However, the innovators of such data backup systems have allayed any such fears that may arise. The increasing role of technology in our everyday life is surely helping to improve our quality of life. Such innovation, even in the educational system, now allows students to read and understand better. With such study materials, aids the school curriculum development. The unique feature of this tablet is a school management system that synchronizes um, communication between the parents, the school and the students. This innovative service provides learning aids to enhance students' understanding. It entails the e-learning application which provides students' explanations directly. Education has to do with audiovisual. So they've come up with video aspect of it whereby students can log in, see some topics, teachers will talk on some topics, and then they listen to these topics. That will refresh in what they have been taught at school. According to these students, Anuchi and Miriam, they feel this is a novel for them and an easy way of learning with delight which will save them the stress of learning. I can do things based on the school curriculum and can learn easily without going to the supper cafe, without, um, my, without waiting for my teacher to come and teach me. As a science student, I've been able to know my science subjects, how to assess them, know them and apply it. This innovation will equally help parents know their children's curriculum better and effectively monitored. There were days where we had people on blackboards and chalks, and there were days you needed to have a teacher. There are days you need to go have an exam. But the world has shrunk into a small, compact, global village, and we're part of that. In order to ensure the dividends of digital opportunities in today's world, the federal government has been advised to appoint IT experts into the various board ministries, departments and agencies in Nigeria. This was a position of the Nigeria Computer Society as a media pilot in Lagos, where the body's president, Professor David Adeumi, expressed the society's view. High profile dignitaries are expected to grace the event from government private and educational sectors, as well as from international and global IT environment. While speaking ahead of the Society's International Conference slated for Akure, the Undo State Capital from Wednesday 22nd to Friday 24th of July 2015, the Nigeria Computer Society, NCS, used the occasion to advocate the need for the government to draw from the wealth of the experiences of IT experts in institutions of learning. NCS has assembled an impressive lineup of leading researchers, entrepreneurs, educators, industry experts, thought leaders, international scholars, and subject matter experts as speakers and resource persons to share their extensive knowledge and experience. And from Kenya, we are aware that the information communication technology sector is projected to grow beyond 15% by the end of 2015, or from last year's 13.4%. To add to the prediction, the sector is projected to approach the 20% growth mark by the end of 2017. This revelation was made by the Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of ICT, Fred Matangi, during the official opening of ICT Week in Kenya. 
as it is an event that provides opportunity for the industry and the regulator to engage on issues affecting the ICT sector and chart pathways for moving the sector forward. Matangi attributed growth to the government's investment in key ICT projects, the development of ICT infrastructure across the country, and the enhancement of favorable policy frameworks that facilitate private sector partnerships as main drivers. Statistics submitted by the Communication Authority of Kenya also indicated the number of mobile phone subscriptions growing. According to Matangi, there were 3.6 million mobile subscriptions at the end of 2014, which was up from 31.3 million recorded the previous year. The number is expected to grow further this year to about 35 million mobile phone subscriptions. folks and friend, imagine the experience of driving in a flying car. Yes, it's not a fantasy. It is an amazing flying car that switches between land and sky and measures 6 meters long, 1.6 meters wide as a car and 8.2 meters wide as a plane. This aeromobile has a maximum speed of 99 meters per hour when driven as a car, but in airplane mode can soar through the skies at 124 meters per hour and can accommodate two passengers. The hybrid is a brainchild of designers Tiffan Klen and Jurak Vakolik in Bratislava in the Slovak Republic. This vehicle can be driven on normal roads and also fit in normal parking space when its wings are tucked in. According to them, the investors say they have been deploying the concept of a flying car since 1990. What do you make of this car? Hello and welcome to this segment of the show, Cyber Updates. I am Yabo Ajayi. We begin with top 5 most visited websites in Nigeria. First on the list, according to IT News, is Google. Google is Nigerian search engine and the most visited website in Nigeria. Google has made a point of rolling out localized websites for almost all countries where they have a presence, as it provides users with local information first before displaying international results. According to Alexa, the website is also the second most visited site in Nigeria, just after parent website google.com. On a global scale, the Nigerian version ranks 233 according to Alexa. The rank is calculated using a combination of average daily visitors to the site and page views on this site over the past three months. And 6.3% of the site visitors are from Nigeria, while 0.6% reside in India. And if you think that was cool, please listen to number two, which is Nairaland. Nairaland started by Shem Oshawa in 2005. The online community targets Nigerians and boasts 1,068,800 registered accounts with 35 million monthly page views. According to Alexa, the website also recently overtook our Africa's News24 website in terms of traffic to become the most visited website in Africa. While it heavily targets native Nigerians, only 65% of its traffic originates from the country, while 7.1% comes from India and 5.6% comes from the US. Closely following Ireland is Vanguard News, Nigeria's most popular online news source. The website is akin to South Africa's News24. Started by the veteran journalist Sam Amuka Pemu and three friends when they founded Vanguard Media in 1983. An extension of the printed newspaper Vanguard is widely regarded as one of the few news sources that is considered independent of political control. Vanguard News has over 700,000 Facebook likes and regularly posts articles features in newspapers and online. The website has over 1,365,171 daily page views and 325,505 daily unique visitors. Great, you may see all we have shared with you. But just stay with us and watch the remaining two making the top five. Next on the top five is the Punch newspaper. Another daily newspaper with a large web presence. The Punch is also considered to be independent of political control. The Punch newspaper was founded by James Abadurin 
an accountant and some Amukai economist, an editor at the Daily Times in 1971. While the printed newspaper had an approximate circulation of over 80,000, the website remains one of the most popular. And lastly on the top five is Linda Ikeji. Entrepreneur and a blogger Linda Ikeji, a former model, created her blog to write about Nigerian news, events, entertainment, lifestyle, fashion and beauty. The blog, predominantly focusing on news and gossip stemming from Nigeria. The website also covers international trends and fashion, with over 80,000 of the site's traffic coming from Nigeria. It also generates some traffic from the US, Ghana and Kenya. Daily page views per visitor is just under the three pages, while visitors spend around seven minutes on the website in total. According to the web traffic measuring websites, Compact the blog gathers around 30,000 unique visitors from the US alone. The website's popularity is put in perspective when considering that 3.8% of the traffic comes from the states. That is it on the segment of the program. See you next time. I am Yabo Ajayi. This is AIT Infotech Network, and I am Bayero Agabi. For more information, please watch us on youtube.com slash TV. Now, you may have heard of stamp duty, and if you haven't heard, here is what it is. Stamp duty issued by the Nigeria Postal Agency, or service, NIPOST, is a means of authenticating payment or transaction. On Insight, we focus on this and its importance in transaction in Nigeria. Philately is the hobby of collecting and studying of postage stamps and other postal materials. Postage stamp is the most widely known postal symbol and the primary element of philately. It is considered as a messenger conveying letters to all parts of the world. By its feature or the images it bears, the stamp becomes an ambassador for the country it represents. It supplies information about the country's culture, history, product, famous personalities and events of national or national significance. If you look at closely at the, at the stamps, you will know that each of the stamps is telling you a story, something important about Nigeria. You can see this one, or your cover, or your is the home of famous Calabash cabins. This stamp is talking about part of our culture. In Nigeria, like many advanced nations, stamp duty has remained a legal means of payment or identification, though the level of awareness may have remained low. Some Nigerians, however, hold divergent views on the subject of studies of stamp duty. Yeah, I use stamp. I don't think it's outdated when you think about the legal implications. But people have to know that beyond that, um, postage stamp there are some legal implications to it if you're doing agreements you're doing some form of um, um, legal documentation you need that stamp duty to me it's outdated honestly because we do not do physical mailing anymore we do e-mailing electronic mailing and then um, stamp well there are better ways of showing that you have paid for an item using stamp electronic ways because everybody's going digital with the paradigm shift inherent in the digital world as a result of social media implosion, the question remains whether postage stamp is still relevant in the digital world. Stamp collecting, stamp production will continue to be a generational issue from one civilization to another. So there will never come a time where technology of any kind will obliterate whatever is supposed to be in areas of stamp collecting. As a way of ensuring that the Stamp Duty Act is implemented, the Nigerian Postal Service, NIPOS, under the leadership of Malam Ibrahim Moribaba, says it's a matter of obligation to ensure the implementation of stamp duty in any transaction worth 1,000 Naira in Nigeria, despite the disruptiveness of new technologies. And now to throw more light on the stamp duty, 
our crew caught up with the Postmaster General of the Federation, Mori Baba. In his words, stamp duty as issued and regulated by NIPOST is also a business sense to those who are the licensees. Actually, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, the Nigerian Postal Service has enormous powers that it has given for the operation of uh, the Nigerian Postal Service. That whatever we point as a stamp, it stands. So therefore, if we make an impression within the electronic uh, device as if this is a stamp, it's a stamp. So therefore, there is already an existing uh, devices that we are using uh, to indicate that uh, stamp has been, the stamp duty has been paid in that, in, in that transaction. So the electronic payments and so on and so forth, we have such in place. Okay. Yes, now. and they, 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 are, they are authentic. The essence of, uh, of, 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 uh, of having the stamp duty is to validate uh, transactions and uh, the system that are being issued. And if that is the case, then it means in, in cases where there are disputes to confirm whether this, that stamp work that's produced by NACOS or so, we are being called upon. And we have to give the specific time and date, and if in the manufacturer, that actually produces a uh, uh, printed such stamps for us because there may be some kind of fixed stamps or it is even possible that you under paid or under fixed the if you are supposed to for it for for the current uh, postal rate is 15 error if you now have fixed 13 error worth of stamp of 20 error worth of stamp it is the, the job you can you can call on us to confirm but that were the one that issued this, yes. Okay, is this the appropriate stamp that has been issued, yes or no? Because some people have even lost their title, title agreements or title lands because they have affixed uh, a lower denomination of uh, whatever is required. Because if you are required to fix a title 13 era and you fix 20 era, then it means you are not uh, obliged, you are not abided by the, by the law of the Actually, it's, 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 uh, the, the prospects are very uh, high because the Nigerians are, are going to be flattered. In fact, it's amazing to you know, you know the number of people that are involved in uh, stamp collection. So the market is there, and uh, I want to believe that by the time uh, we get people involved to also understand what is the value of being a member of stamp collection, uh, you, you find that more people will be involved. Because at, at a point you want to probably destroy, uh, dispose a stamp that we have bought for 5 naira, for 20 naira, for 15 naira, so we will be going for, for thousands of naira. So, so the prospects are there and uh, we are doing everything to ensure that uh, we educate people as far as the flight services are concerned. That's the PMG of NIPOST. From there, we wrap up the show for the week. For any information, please log on to youtube.com slash TV or better still, you can email us at bayeroagabi at yahoo.com or better still, you also just text the number you see on the screen. Until then, I remain yours sincerely. Bayero Agabi. Bye-bye for now.